Hi, I'm Robin, and in this video I will show you how to build this super low profile macro pad. But it's not only low profile, it also has hot swap support for both chalk and MX switches. And that means you can just rip out your old switches like this and replace them with new ones if you want to. I actually made three versions of this macro pad. Two low profile versions for both the streamer friend and my dad, as well as a full size MX version for me. Hey, this is me from editing. Turns out my friend just recently got a stream deck and doesn't need my macro pad anymore. So this one will go to my mom. Be it streaming, video editing or even music production, such a macro pad is a useful asset. A macro pad, for those of you who don't know, is not that dissimilar from a normal keyboard. But instead of typing single characters, it executes a number of commands with a single button press. So for example, starting or stopping your OBS recording or muting yourself in Discord can all be done in a single button press. My journey started where every one of my projects starts, stealing. I mainly took inspiration from Zex Mirage as well as this video from Zalem. But before I can start building, I want to choose the type of switch I'm going to use. Mechanical switches can be separated into three types. Three types. Linear, tactile and clickies. Linears are smooth, fast and quiet. Tactiles add a little bit of tactile feedback to let you know when you press the button and clickies add a lot of tactile and audio feedback. This audio feedback is important because it can be quite annoying for other people around you. If you don't yet know what kind of switch you want to buy, buying such a switch tester is a pretty good idea. These let you play around with a bunch of different switches to let you know what kind of switch you prefer. This one already has a bunch of switches missing because I used them for one of my macro pads which I'm going to get to in a second. But these are very fun and also very satisfying. All of these are full size MX switches, which are very popular, but also very tall. This lifts your fingers up and can lead to things like carpal tunnel. For a macro pad, that might not matter at all, but if you want to use it for a keyboard, that might be something to consider. This is where low profile switches come into place. They have a similar travel, but are much shorter. But since they are newer than full size MX, they are fewer options to choose from. So that might be something to consider as well. Lucky for you, my PCB is compatible with both. I knew I wanted to go low profile and I really like clickies, which is why I ended up going with the Gator and Blues. This ended up being a mistake, but I will get to that in a second. Continuing with the board design, I knew I wanted hot swap support. For those of you who don't know, hot swap support basically means we can very easily change our switches. Instead of soldering the switches directly to the PCB, we solder a socket for the switch. Doing this has another benefit. Normally we couldn't just overlap the chalk and the max footprints to get compatibility for both. But if we are using hot swap sockets, we can actually do that. And yes, I got that idea from Zex Mirage. Now I won't bore you with the board design. Just know I used an IO expander instead of a keyboard matrix. This ended up being not such a great idea and you will see why in a second. Once the design files were done, I shipped them to PCBWay, which were nice enough to provide them for this video. If you have a project that requires PCBs like my macro pad, you might want to check them out. They are surprisingly cheap and they even provide CNC and 3D printing capabilities for whatever you might need. Which is nice, since not everyone wants to spend two years building their own CNC router. Once I got the PCBs, I noticed that the switches I first bought, the Gateron Blues, did not fit. Cherry Max and Chalk Low Profile seem to work fine, but Cherry Max Low Profile does not. Turns out, Cherry Max and Low Profile MX have a different footprint and are not compatible. I guess I should have seen that coming, but I didn't. This meant that I couldn't use the Gateron Blues, which is a shame since I bought quite a few of them. Well, onto the pile of shame it goes. Since I didn't want to give up on low profile switches, I went out and bought some chalk switches. And would you look at that? One of the options has the same name as me! I also used the keys from my switch tester to build a full size version. This is probably a sin in the keyboard community, but what am I gonna do? Buy even more switches? This project has already been quite expensive, so I'm not going to do that.
I originally wanted to make this Macropad wireless, but that didn't really end up working out. I plan to use one of these H005 modules, which out of the box are not HID compatible. But if you reflash them with a different firmware, which you can do, they actually can work as a keyboard. But for some reason I wasn't able to do that and after a few days I just gave up. Since I want to use a Pico W in my next version and any time I would spend now would just be pretty much a waste of time. This is also why I didn't solder all of these components. They are meant for battery management and since I can only use it wired, they are completely redundant. Also, notice how I forgot to wire up this I2C interface. With this I should have been done soldering, but I later found out I made a big mistake with one of my boards. I accidentally soldered one of the I.O. expanders backwards. This meant that the microcontroller couldn't properly communicate with it. And since I didn't have any spares, my only option was to desolder it and resolder it in the right orientation. This was especially stressful since I wanted to gift this micropad to my dad as a Christmas present. I hope it survived that, because I don't have any more. Can you see that? All the pins are like one big blob. I hope I can clean that up. Ah, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Especially because I don't have any more of these. I only bought three. Ah. I did my best cleaning it up, but these cheap disordering guns are so annoying they just want to throw them in the trash and never see them again. God, this piece of crap. It's such a piece of shit. One hour later. Can you see that? It's mostly pretty clean again. Let's hope it still works and didn't break. So point going in that direction. Not like that. In that direction. Just like right here. No, it almost definitely broke off. Yeah, it broke off. No. <sighs> but I wasn't going to give up that easily. I might have ripped off the pin, but the IC might still be fine. I began scraping away the plastic in hopes of exposing the trace underneath. Once I had a small trace, I soldered my I2C wire. And miraculously, it worked. Oh, it's stuck. I think I got it. I think it's working. If it did, if, if the initial, I can't speak. I th if the initialization would have failed, I think this blue LED would have gone to fail safe, so it would have blinked every half second. And I think it's working. I think I would. I think it's working. One second. One second. You can't see it on my like monitor, but come on, it's working. It's working. Oh my god. <laughs> it's working. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's working. It's working. Thank you. Okay. So I've, I've mapped this button to the uh, taking a screenshot and you can see. It's working. And this one is escape. It's working. It's working. I'm gonna dump so much hot glue in there. That connection can't be undone. That is so cool. I can't believe I got it to work. And the camera battery is empty. Nice. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. With the hardware finished, the only thing we're missing is the software. 
I wrote a little bit of code to read the IO expander and send key codes over USB. If you're wondering why I didn't use QMK or KMK, you might want to read the GitHub page. Long story short, I am a dumbass and couldn't get it to work. And with that, this project is done. I am happy with what I have, but I will do a version 2 in the future and hopefully make it wireless. If you want to build one of these yourself, you can find all of the files in the description down below. I did fix the I2C issues, so you won't have to solder those wires yourself. Just make sure you don't solder the IO expander backwards. Thank you for watching and we'll hopefully see you next time. I actually made three of these. Two low profile versions for both my streamer friend and a dad. <laughs> <laughs> it also has hot swap support for both chalk and MX switches. Whoops. Rip out your old switches. Yeah, no good. <laughs> Such a macro pad is pretty much a useful everybody. <laughs> Mechanical switches can be separated into three types. Three, three types. One thing you will notice is that all of these are. There goes one. I knew I wanted to go low profile. Oh. Bye.